How might OneNote assist a student as they gather and organize their research for a longer assignment, which we might call a project? Let's add a new section and call it Research. That way the student can add future research or other assignments here as well. In this section, let's add a page for this assignment and name it Mount Rushmore. Since I still have my tags summary open on the right, that reminds me to add some tags. It makes sense to add a to-do tag since this is something our student has to do. I will probably be using this websites to visit tag soon once I add some websites to this page. But what I want isn't on this list right now, so let's add a custom tag. Since my student is new to OneNote, they might not remember by the organizational structure. So let's add a project tag to give us another way to find this later. Now that we have created that tag, we look back in our list and our newly created tags will be right at the top of the list. Now we're going to the Review tab where the research tool is found. I'm going to highlight the text I want research to search for and click on Research. When the research box opens on the far right, it gives me the search results for the terms I highlighted. It uses Bing as a search engine, and it may look like it's simply doing a Bing search, but if you were to open Bing and use the same search terms, you'll see that the results are curated here to be more classroom appropriate. These results are from the National Park Service, History.com, National Parks and Conservation Association, Mount Rushmore National Memorial website, and the South Dakota Department of Tourism. Also Wikipedia, which although it's not nearly as great as students think it is, it's probably also not as evil as we think it is. If we click on one, naturally it opens in my browser. At this very early stage, maybe our students doing nothing more than gathering websites as possible sources based on just clicking on them and their first impression. Whether or not they got to that site from the research tool or not, they may want to save the link in OneNote. One option is to simply copy and paste the URL from the web browser into OneNote. Let's place them side by side like columns instead of, say, one on top of the other. Our student wants to go back and check out Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore National Memorial Site, the National Park Service, and History.com. Now that we have something to work with, let's take a closer look at History.com and see what's useful there. Oh, some websites make it easy to cite them as a reference. This one has a pop-up window with that information. They're probably familiar with clicking and dragging or using Control c and Control v to copy and paste, and, and that works in OneNote too. If that's all they know, that's probably what they will do. Notice that when you copy and paste text into OneNote from the website, it adds the URL automatically. So our first little time saver is that we didn't actually have to add that separate. Returning to the website, there's a lot of good stuff here. There's text and images, embedded videos and hyperlinks. One of the tools in OneNote is to take a screen clipping. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, you can press and hold the Windows key on your keyboard and then the Shift key and the S key. Windows, Shift, S. This grays out your screen and that's the sync signal to position your cursor wherever you want to start your click and drag over the portion of the screen you want to take a picture of. In a moment, the window pops up asking you what you want to do with this. You can select a location including your current page or section in OneNote or you can just copy it to the clipboard. That way you can go into any program and paste it right where you want it. Since we're collecting information in OneNote, I will choose the page that we're on. Later, we'll try one in the same section so you can see the difference. As you can see, it placed the screen clipping along with the timestamp below and the source URL above right on the current page in OneNote. The image pl is placed wherever the cursor currently is. This is one alternative to copy and paste, which works much better for images, but I also like it for text because it's not editable. There will be no confusion later between what the student writes and what is someone else's text. Let's go back to the website and see what other options we have for moving items from there to our OneNote. This website also has a print icon. This opens an all text page, but with clickable links. Normally when you print, those links on that piece of paper are not clickable. There are ways to add this text to OneNote with clickable link, but it is important to note that print to OneNote is not one of them. When you click print, choose to change your printer and choose the printer send to OneNote 2016. Now when you click print, it will again ask you where you want to place this. This time, instead of adding the content of an entire website to our current page, let's add it to this section. This will create a new page in this section just for this content. Now we have the entire text, and the bottom of each page also shows the URL. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, all the information from the citation window is included. 
Unfortunately, as I said, the links are not clickable in this method. If that's important to you, then let's go back to our previous methods of clicking text and check them out for that feature. Let's go back to the printable page, copy and paste it, and move it where we can read it. As you can see, copy and paste results in clickable links. How about the screen capture tool? Uh, the screen capture tool works similarly to the print to OneNote, so the links again are not functional. So which of these methods our students will choose will depend on factors like how much content do they want to bring over at one time, whether it's text, pictures, or a combination, and whether or not it matters if the links from that source are clickable to get to other possible sources. Everything that we insert is editable, so we can select text here and move it somewhere else on the page if we want to. Remember that we can also use our tags, so our students can tag websites to look at later that they only added here but didn't get to check out yet. By the way, if you want to add the same tag to more than one item, you don't have to do them separately. Just click and drag over all of them to select them, and then add your tag. What if we want to add an image from a website? Well, we can right-click over an image and choose to either save that image or copy the image. Students will have to click on the image and use Control-C to copy it. They can then return to OneNote and use Control-V to paste it on the page. They can then resize or move the image on the page. Uh, we haven't really talked about this, but you've probably noticed that OneNote allows complete flexibility of where you place the images, objects, and text in relation to each other in ways you can't do in Word. Another option is to save the image. Again, right-click and choose Save as Image, and a window will appear for you to choose where to save it. Wherever we save it, we will return to OneNote and go there to Insert Image, go to that same location we just saved it to, and select that image. This too is resizable and movable. Again, students can't right-click, so they won't have that option to add it via saving, so their option is to use the Control-C and Control-V. In the next section, we will show you how to make the image searchable and how to copy text from within the image 